So it, it sticks better to rubber, let's, let's just say it that way. So let's take a look then at the grid for the Sterling Moss Memorial Trophy. The AC Cobra Dragon Snake, the Puce uh, Behemoth, Mike Whitaker and, and Andy Jordan, Jaggery type of John uh, of Young and Ward in the centre, and the all Dutch combination Pastorelli and Hugenholtz in their 250 GT on the outside of row one. Gooding and Greensill Z type, and the short wheelbase of David and Olivier Hart, the father and son combination. Paul and Butcher's E type starts sixth, the Gay and Twyman. Uh, 250, the uh, silver and yellow car in seventh, and in eighth place, the Pearson Chandock Jaguar E Type. More E Types behind them Tetley and Mayton, car number 10, and the Mines and Huff Cut 7 car. That's a fixed head coupe rather than the convertible with the soft roof, as is the uh, Young and Ward car on the front row of the good. So FHC fixed head coupe, so it's got the slighter, sort of fast back look uh, with the opening rear window. Uh, so aerodynamically should be a little superior, but uh, there is not a very great deal in it. So that's your first four rows of the grid. Behind them, uh, Friedrichs Hadfield, the best of the DB4s on the outside. That's uh, car, uh, in 13th place on the grid. Uh, but it is Button and Bunkham, the childhood friends in car number 22, run by Bob Neville. Another fixed head E-type, and in between them, another all-Dutch crew, Berman and Vandeloff, in a red 250 short wheelbase. Another Cobra, the Cook and Bryant car, that's the white one, ahead of the IndyCar team, the E-type of Dixon and Frank Keaty. Uh, Minshaw's father and son, John and Jack, in 333, the family E-type. Needell and Spears, hot under the collar from his last race. Uh, not Tiff, Spears, uh, in the number three Cobra, ahead of the DB4 of Ditting and Mass. Another DB4 GT behind them on the inside of the next row of the grid. And we work through more Aston Martins. The C1 Chevy Corvette, that's the white car number 20 with the white hardtop. That will be easy to spot, even with eyes closed. And there are 25 cars on the grid because the 26 car there, the Padmore and Stahl E-Type will not start. Green flag waves, and away we go. The flag drops, and an electrifying start from the outside of the front row for this, this one hour long Sterling Moss Memorial Trophy from Nicky Pastorelli. The Dutchman in the Ferrari gets away like a scalded cat, and the Paul City Cobra down to fourth place as they turn into Badwick Corner. Oh, well, Gary Pearson gaining places hand over fist. He's got several places, but Nicky Pastorelli knew exactly what he was doing. We discussed about him laying some rubber from his starting point on the dummy start, and he laid it down and got out front, but the drag. Dragon Snake, we know it's mighty quick in a straight line. Is back, not in second, not in third, but in fourth place. You can spot it. It's as uh, it's metallic, oh, that candy flake pink. But in behind, how many E types would you like in one shot? Well, we can give you plenty. But unfortunately for William Paul in the red number five, he started very well on the grid in about fifth place, and he's fallen down to about eighth or ninth or tenth. Yeah, he was just passed by the Minshaw car, the red car. There is the Cobra in the middle of all this. Now, what the Cobra is going to do is run out of tyres and brakes. So running out of tyres on lap one is not a great look in that car. That's why I think uh, Mike Whitaker being uh, relatively cautious. It is, however, Nicky Pastorelli that leads from John Young in the dark blue E-type with the white nose band, sort of shades of the Courier Cross colours there, if you like. And you see uh, cars coming through the more upright uh, DB4 GT's problem for 65. Well, so right the down the back, it's Martin Hunt's uh, Cobra. Yeah. He overtook several people and is having to hand it back because clearly it's something amiss. I'm afraid yeah. that's a tumbler. The last car's going past him, so places gains and sadly the race lost. However, our race leader, Nicky Pastorelli, from third at the start, not just taking the lead, but stretching at 1.1 seconds over John Young's E type and then David Hart, third place. That's up two positions in his Ferrari GT short wheelbase. Now, in fifth place, uh, fifth place is the Gooding Greensill E-Type and I was talking to Nigel at lunchtime he said they had a couple of problems in practice yesterday which hopefully they have ironed out so that car looking to work up the order the gunmetal car with the blue nose that's Rob Huff and Richard Mines Richard starting the car car number one on the back of that as we watch car number 10 the, the white car with the red roof that's the Tetley and Mayton car working through ahead of cut seven and again, this is a, a sort of combination of pro drivers and gentleman drivers, and not everybody has started their gentleman driver. So we will see one order in part one, and that may well be changed in part two. Some driver lineups, Dixon Frankiti, you're thinking perhaps, will be very similar, although Scott Dixon doesn't have much in the way of uh, history here. Car number 22 as well, the dark blue E-type fixed head coupe. 
Al Bunkham's not slow. Jensen Button, he's won a thing or two in his time. But again, neither of them wildly experienced on the Goodwood Motor Circuit. So, you know, your reputation doesn't necessarily make you quick around here. Yeah, and I mean, Jensen's raced an E-Type here before, but a higher spec in the REC, the Royal Automobile Club Tourist Trophy. This a very, these are much more road-going style of car. They're not so much a... Uh, away from the original form. Person who really suffered on that opening lap. I mentioned William Paul lost a lot of positions. He lost nine positions. So his teammate, Rory Butcher, the touring car racer, is going to have to do an awful lot to play catch up. Yeah, he probably is, isn't he? Pearson and Chandok's e time up to fourth place after the start. But Nicky Pastorelli, fastest race lap, now nearly three seconds clear of the second place car, which has been shown as Davin and Olivier Hart's car. So that Ferrari has moved up ahead of the Young and Ward e type and it happened on the last lap. So we have a Dutch driver first and a Dutch driver second. Yes, we were talking about there was a little battle between them just to be qualified uh, better than the other one, but beautifully smooth driving from Nicky Pastorelli here. Wonderful to ride. This on is Jensen Button. Oh, sorry, Jensen, board, I beg your pardon. Yeah, with Jensen in the E type. <laughs> Those toggle switches and no dials, that's a Jaguar dashboard, isn't it? Even a racing version of the Jaguar dash. Car prepared by uh, Bob Neville. They raced, or Jensen raced a different uh, E type the Bobo last year. He sold that on, and then this one came into his sphere and uh, he's prepared it for his survival meeting. And Jensen, as ever, when he's back in a car, just enjoying driving for the fun of it. And win, lose, or draw, yes, they want to be competitive, but uh, the two of them just want to have fun. He and, and Al Bunkham have been like school boyfriends, primary school friends, all their lives they've done things together, and this is no different. He's just behind he's, this he's... big chasing pack, which is a real snarling wasp's nest of E-types, the, the Ferraris and the Cobra. But the important thing there, a place being gained by the Dragon Snake, yeah. is that Jensen Button got to the front of that group, he gained another position, he's up to seventh, his next target, albeit four seconds up the line, is uh, the number seven, which is uh, pressing on very hard the short wheelbase Ferrari with a... Uh, who's, who's not that? Vanson Gay started Yeah, that. here he is, Vanson Gay now looking to go by John Young as well to follow the Cobra through. So uh, the 250 GT short wheelbase of Vanson Gay, that's his car. It's uh, silver with bright yellow uh, Curie Francorch. I'm not quite sure why Jacques Smart has decided yellow. It is obviously one of the Belgian colours, but the Curie Francorch cars always had either flashes of yellow or were all yellow. But the uh, Puce Cobra on its way up the order as well. So Mike Whitaker uh, starting that car in fifth place. In fact, he's now up to fourth place, isn't he? So the uh, Young and Ward E-Type, the dark blue car, car number four, the, the uh, black roof and the white nose band. That car just gradually dropping away from the leaders. Gary Pearson driving beautifully in the white E-Type with the black cruise. He's got past Dragon Snake, Dragon Snake trying to hang on behind. Ooh, a bit yeah. smoky there. He is a little bit, but he is closing down on the second place car of David and Olivier Hart. And that is the very dark, unusual colour for a Ferrari. It's a real rich British racing green. Car number 16 coming down into Madwick. Then the white number 23 E-Type. That's Gary Pearson, and he's been caught fast by Mike Whitaker. Whitaker now clearly feeling I've got the temperature in the tyres, I've got the brakes where I want them, now's the time to start pushing on and John Young in the dark E-type with the black roof holding on from the number seven Ferrari of Vanson Gay. Yeah, Vanson looking very, very positive. You're absolutely spot on, Martin. Uh, Mike Whitaker not going too hard too soon on his rubber and we've seen this when it raced here last year. It really does come on song as the race keeps progressing. Gary Pearson's going to have to fight very hard. He'll be woefully short in the horsepower battle, but in the handling battle, he comes out on top. And of course, that pink purse whatever, Hughes, with the metal flake, Cobra. It's the 289 body, it's the narrow body. It hasn't got the big bulbous arches, it hasn't got all the rubber of the 427 cars that we're gonna see, the big block cars that we'll see in the Royal Automobile Club Tourist Trophy. So it's the 289, it's the smaller, just five and a half liter engine. Uh, so it's, it's still got not even remotely enough tire for the power. Riding on board again with the Gary Pearson, sharing with Karun Chandog. And we'll be doing some of the TV coverage as well this weekend. And you can see they've got the timer 
on the steering wheel. So as well as getting away from the line, he had to press the go button to start stop the start watch, as Murray used to say, or start the clock going, so he knows when they're getting towards the pit window, because the team won't be on the radio. OK, box, box, box this lap. He'll have to box, box, box himself, and a little bit of arm signals, I'm sure, with a pit wall, just to confirm when he's planning to come in. Well, it'll be another 12 minutes or so until the pit window will open. It should be 20 minutes into this one-hour race. So they've still got plenty of racing to be getting on with, but uh, every lap, Nicky Pastorelli's just stretching a little further clear. He's not being troubled in the, that fantastic number 14 uh, 250 GT short wheelbase competizione, a car that in period mainly is hill climbing. Yeah. Well, you know, these cars were built to do just about everything that their owners could throw at them. Look at the E-type, look at the tyre squish, but look at the way that the driver is not getting cornering grip that you would see from a modern race car, even from a modern, you know, two-litre touring car. Far more grip with a slick tyre. These are treaded tyres, they got deep sidewalls that get 60 profile at best. So the Dunlop CR65 racing tyre and, and that kind of thing is built to be leaned on, but it's built to drift, it's built to slide, it's not built to give cornering on rails. These cars don't have the suspension for it, they don't have the tyres for it, they don't have the brakes for it. Yeah, and next time you take a look at a, a rear angle shot like that one, uh, we've just seen, look at the fact the steering wheel is, wasn't being turned in opposite lock, it was just the car drifting across, it's like, oh, little bit of a twitch on the exit for Gary Pearson there from the chicane, the Dragon Snake, surely this time will swallow it up, they've got a better exit, the power, the more power, the greater power it has, and up the inside, how did you not see the bright pink car coming up the inside it's all right gary pierce has seen it but you know what you're not quite close enough again look at the drift and still those front wheels not being turned it's steering on the throttle there at magic that is what historic racing is all about that is if you if you hear the phrase four-wheel drift that's exactly what people are talking about where the car is not steered through the corner on the steering wheel you set it up and then you balance it with power so Gary Pearson closing in on David Hart, father of the duo that drives that green Ferrari. All this time, by the way, Nicky Pastorelli disappearing into the middle distance. He's left Sussex. He's uh, in uh, Hampshire. Whatever. Yes, I was going to say whatever the next county is in He's the direction he's heading. Now David Hart made a bit of a mistake in the second part of St Mary's, and Gary Pearson. We're riding on board with Gary Pearson. Got very, very close indeed. You know what? I tell you, who'll be getting agitated down in the pit lane? The muck driver is going to take over. Karun Shandor, he'll be bouncing from foot to foot, knowing the car could come in from second place, because I think David Hart, unless it was a soulless mistake, is now really feeling the pressure from Pearson. Well, Karun wakes up bouncing from foot to foot. You know, he's just Zebedee, basically, isn't he? So he will be super excited and just chomping at the bit again. And I wonder, actually, you know, Gary Pearson's not slow, as you can clearly see. You know, he's closing down the man in second place. There's David Hart, there's Gary Pearson. And again, we talked about this in the last race I would be happy if I had a preparation company one I hope as good as Gary Pearson's never being able never mind being able to drive as well ah is that the button car no, uh, kind of a four, so that's uh, Young and Ward's car. John Young was losing ground from the start. He, he was, he'd gone down several positions. A failure to proceed, isn't it? So that's most unfortunate. So Chris Ward, who was surely going to be a star in that car, doesn't get the chance to do so. But second, third and fourth, David Hart, Gary Pearson and Mike Whitaker, three different makes of cars, producing their performance in yeah. different ways, enticing. So Ferrari, E-Type, Cobra. Keep an eye on the car behind, car number seven, Vincent Gay, in his silver and yellow Ferrari. He's just set that car's fastest race lap, 1 minute 30.8. Only one car is going quicker, and that's Nicky Pastorelli, the race leader, who did a 129.6 on the I mean, Nicky Pastorelli is just destroying them right now. But having started on the front row, John Hugan holds and Nicky Pastorelli's plan was to start the quick guy, get out front, and then give it to John Hugenholz with as much of a cushion as possible to see if he can hang on and claim victory. Vanson Gay, conversely, is he's actually probably in this car at, as quick as Joe Twynham. So this car's pace should not drop. Vanson Gay was a good GT racer when he was a, a younger driver and is a very good GT historic racer. And again, look, David Hart covering off the inside there. It's going to make him very slow out of the chicane. Can the E-Type, can the Cobra take advantage as they come under us? The Cobra's making a move down the inside of the E-Type. I thought that it was going to be David Hart that was in trouble. It's not. It's Pearson as through goes. 
Job done. Mike Wood is not yet. He's it still is. got an overlap. Still through he goes. It was, it was last time around Gary Pearson was catching David Hart and in turn was being caught as they accelerated past us, past the pits, uh, by the driver in fourth place, uh, Mike Whitaker. But this time around it was another half length closer and that was just enough. At that point, Gary Pearson looks across and goes, uh -uh, if I turn in now, there's going to be tears. I'd like to see how clear or otherwise uh, the Cobra's windscreen is because that E-Type number 23 has been blowing oil smoke for a while and... And uh, he's been sat behind Whitaker. Uh, Whitaker's been sat behind uh, Gary Pearson. Now they are right with David Hart. Uh, pit lane doesn't open. Ooh, and that's a lot smokier than it was. That's a lot smokier than it was. Uh, the Pearson E type drifting out wide there. He drifting out wide on oil that he's leaving on his tyres. Quite possibly. Now, often when you get a change of driver in a, in a tight pack, they will have a different approach to where they go past. Also, if you get the Dragon Snake Cobra, you've got a bit more grunt, so you've got a sledgehammer to you, play with. Also. Exactly. Where's the walnut? But anyhow, the walnut is D David Hart, who's driving really, really well. That little one mistake about three laps ago at St Mary's aside, he's held on to uh, this second place. But look, as these two cars accelerate away, the pit thoroughbred, the Ferrari in that second position, but right behind, the, well, it's not, it's a savage thing, it's a wonderful thing. The Dragon Snake is surely going to drag past him down to Madrid. Up the and inside he, he goes. He does, straight down the inside, and David Hart knew the writing was on the wall, didn't he? Just rolled off the throttle there. And, and look how you were quite right, Vincent Gay is on the tail of this battle. The order keeps on changing, Gary Pearson pushed back to third in this group, fourth overall, but Vincent Gay driving beautifully in the silver and yellow Ferrari. Six minutes till the pit window opens. By that time, Vincent Gay will be third, the Cobra is already second, and Pastorelli will be 15 seconds up the road. It's already 12.7, so it's not enough of a margin but it is a big margin for John Hugenholz to take over. It certainly is. Naturally, I slightly sense I need to see a few more corners of Gary Pearson's E-Type. I think it stopped smoking, which is either a good thing or, unfortunately, a lot of time, not a good thing. So, Karun, <laughs> not as you thing. were in the pit lane. Right, DB4 GTs. Oh, the bonnet's the, coming uh, up. Corvette what the Corvette? C1. Oh, dear. Now, that's got those sort of turn latches, in, in fact, as the Astons do. And the fact that it's a front-hinged bonnet, as indeed the Astons are, is a good thing because it means that if it flaps up, the air immediately pushes it back down. But you can see the turn handles have not quite gripped into the pit lane he comes on. This is a little bit force majeure. Well, it's before the pit window's open. Yeah. He needs it to, to, to be put back down. The, uh, the car's owner, the, the author, uh, Peter James, will not be jumping on board. This will have to go out. The pit window is not open. Just no. fix it, please. And I don't think Peter's ready either, but I think they have been shown the black and orange flag. Look, there's an official there to make sure it all happens in his uh, Damon Hill hat. And they are gaffering down gaffer tape. If gaffer tape can't fix it, it's really broken. Out yeah. goes the Corvette C1. So, yeah, Peter James, as ever, an enthusiastic member of the Revival fraternity, coming back out of the pit lane in front of the car that is in 10th place. So that's the Berman and Vandaloff red Ferrari. Meanwhile, back in this battle with the Aston Martins, the oh, well now where what position are they? I've gone complete oh, that's the race lead that's Nicky Pastorelli going through so now okay back to the Astons the Astons are battling just outside the top 15. So DB4 GT pretty though it is and some would argue getting on for as pretty as a short wheelbase not as quick in this race as the Ferraris are the leader has gone through that battle you know if you're, getting, if you're not going to be in the top 10 you want to battle probably with cars exactly like yours. It's certainly the photographers for the Aston Martin Owners Club and Aston Martin owners themselves. They will love this trio of Aston Martins. Of course they want those DB4 GTs to be at the front. Now, Nicky Pastorelli is going to stay out as long as he possibly can before having over to John Hugenholt. So his advantage with many cars between him and the bright pink AC Cobra behind. It was, what, 14 seconds last time around? The Cobra is going to be coming in quite early, one feels, because Andrew Jordan is already pacing around, ready to get on board. He really is, isn't he? Again, Andy Jordan and Father Mike running a very successful race prep team, and the gap is coming down. He came down to 10 seconds. Yeah, that was traffic in front of Nick yeah. Pastorelli, but he's got past that gaggle of cars. But the chasing cars may not catch that before they serve their pit stop, so he's taken the hit, but tough. Well, the other thing is they may not catch them in the same place. If they catch him on the Lavin straight, then all well and good. If they catch him on the front straight, all well and good. And here is the Cobra coming up behind the battling DB4 Armada. Three DB4 GTs, white, Aston Green, British Racing Green with the red nose. And 
up comes the Cobra in second place. Now, Mike Whitaker doesn't want to lose any time here. Two minutes 25 till the pit window opens. He'll have to do at least this lap. I think Andy Jordan was probably just saying two laps to go on the pit board. This one plus maybe one more. I do fear for the longevity of the Pearson Chandock number 23 E-Type, though. It is blowing out a lot of smoke. If that was my car, I would be thinking it's not very healthy. Have you ever driven behind your Morris Miner? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny enough, I never have. Um, Nothing else I own is as quick. Ha ha ha. Uh, so, ooh, shape up in the Astons, and David Hart has to take to the curbs, and John Young squeezes through as well. Now, is this a chance for the Astons to change positions? No. Obviously, they all need uh, machine guns and the ejector seats. Exactly. It weighs them down, but Tom Alexander at the front of that trio of Aston Martins, but really well done by second, third, and fourth. Yeah. Whitaker, David Hart, and Gary Pearson to get through. But our race leader, Nicky Pastorella stroking clear, but in fact, teammate John Hugenholtz now starting to get all ready to come on board. The pit window opens yeah. in just over a minute's time. Well, I think, you know, it's wise to be ready just in case the car appears, because if the car appears you, if, without you having your helmet and gloves on, you've got no hope of holding your position because it's just going to be a complete mess. However, don't forget, we had problems yesterday in the Freddie March Memorial Trophy, the first race of the weekend as we raced into the evening, exactly as we're doing here. Cars with speeding in the pit lane violations, cars coming in too late, cars coming in too... Now, nobody came in too early, but cars coming in too fast and not spending enough time in the pit lane either. So there's a mandatory minimum pit stop for safety reasons and because you need a pint and a half of olive oil on every driver to get them in and out of a Cobra. Other cars are less difficult to get in and out of, even with the roll cages. But there is a minimum pit stop time for safety. There is a maximum speed in the pit lane of 20 miles an hour. It's unbelievably slow when you've just come off a circuit as fast as this. And uh, the mandatory pit stop time from pit in to pit out is 50 seconds. But actually, the one that's far easier to fumble is the speed in the pit lane, yeah. 20 mile an hour. Uh, Average, not average, is the, the maximum there. A bit of tail out exit from the chicane from David Hart. This should give a bit of sucker to Gary Pearson. He should be able to close in. He's eight tenths of a second down that white to black Ito. I actually think when I've looked at it recently, it's not smoking as much. But let's take the rear shot. Oh, no, it is. Most certainly one PKL. Woof. Now, it's not smoking in a straight line, is it? No. Yeah, no, it still is. Because uh, it, it, it really smokes when he turns into Madrick. Now, is that just because he's lifted off and then puts the throttle back on to drive it through Madrick? In which case, it's valve guide. In which case, it's not an issue. It'll just be a little bit richer than it needs to be. Okay, like anything then. else, if, if it's... If it's after you've lifted off and then get back on the power, that's valve guides, and, and that should be OK. I mean, obviously, it's not what you want to happen, but it should be OK. Jensen Button uh, on board the number 22 uh, E-Type in traffic. Yeah, well, he's go going past Tom Alexander. He's trying to keep up with Scott Dixon. He's closed in enormously. He's found four seconds on him in about the past four laps, so he'll be enjoying this chase. Yeah. Look, an IndyCar great with the World Formula One champion. Right, in, yeah, multiple IndyCar champion and Formula One world champion. There you go. You can't argue with that. That's, that's some great calibre of driver in this race. Just, just those two drivers on their own really just kind of put Goodwood exactly where it is for, for pro drivers or, or former pro drivers. Yeah, Scott Dixon's been eyeing up this event for years, wanting to come across. He came as a spectator once, now he's back as a racer. I don't think it'd be his last visit Sunday. Yeah, I, I, judging from what Jimmy Johnson's been saying, ditto for him as well. First car's in the pit lane, first in, Friedrichsen Hadfield car. Not sure that looked like a racing stop, though. It may have, oh, it may have been. Into the pit lane comes the car from... Uh, fourth, second place. It was second place, wasn't it? Yes, it's already dropped down the order as he gets into the pit lane. Out gets Gary Pearson. In gets the slightly smaller figure of Andy Jordan. So Mike Whitaker hopping out over. as fast as he can. Mm -hmm. And again, 50 seconds mandatory minimum pit stop time. Yes, they went with the first race of the meeting. It took a while for any penalties to come through. We couldn't understand the timing screen, but it all sorted itself out at the end. But they have been forewarned. All the drivers don't wreck your race. Okay. John Young into the pit. Uh, that's not John Young, that's 179. So into the pits comes the white E type of uh, David Gooding. David Gooding to hand over to Nigel Greensill as early as he can. As I said, Nigel said they, they had a couple of problems in practice. Hopefully the car will be running better in the race, he said. 
They didn't qualify that shabbily, did they? They were fourth on the grid. So David Gooding doing his job as the non-pro driver, which is keeping up the speed as much as possible and not blowing it by getting involved in racing that you don't need to be involved in. Like you, if I was the team manager of the number 14 Ferrari, I would be keeping Nicky Pastorelli out until the very last minute, until there are 20 minutes and a few seconds to go. So I think he's going to do two-thirds of this race. And as we've seen, the other side of that coin is with Andy Jordan getting in as early as humanly possible. So he also does two-thirds of the race. Scott Dixon, Dario Franchitti, probably going to be 50-50. Oh, we've lost an Aston. That's the uh, muller Hufflinger car, the uh, father-daughter to Arletta Muller, got married. She's now Arletta Herfiger. So Urs Muller and uh, uh, who started that? It was, uh, it was Urs. It was Urs who started it. Yeah. And now we've just seen Karim Chandok getting strapped in with his Indian race livery helmets on board over the checkered background. So uh, still for once relishing this occasion. But of course, he would have watched the giant screen if you noticed his car, the number 23, Jaguar E-Type, has been smoking. It will carry on smoking. But, get, but the boys will have been saying, don't worry, it's fine, that's OK. If it does it, there, that's a problem. Right, he came in exactly right the same time the as Ferrari. the David Hart car. Olivier Hart is now on yeah. board that uh, very, very dark green uh, GT. Uh, sorry, uh, the 250 GT short wheel race. So nothing ventured, nothing gained. In fact, in anything, Olivier Hart's got a better exit from the pit lane, has gained a yeah, second or two. Very much better. Very much better. Guess where he really got up. Oh, and they come out ahead of the Dragon Snake. Yellow flags are out. Oh, Safety man. car board is out because an Aston Martin has. Uh, is that that's the number six. That's board? the Urs Buller one. Right. So actually, Urs has had it off, and that is. Is that a Woodcut? Yes. Uh, yes, it is, isn't it? It's the end of, that's the end of the lap. I can't see around the corner. Can somebody move the grandstand back? <laughs> or can we just pull the camera back so we can figure out where that is? No, but, I think uh, it's actually at Madrid, is it? Yeah, well, Let's take a look. Either way... It's down it the top one. Madrid, it's Madrid, yeah. so the approach right to the first corner... Right on the end corner. of the tyre barrier. He's gone onto the grass, hasn't he? And Correct. Just, yeah, just Possibly by the smallest of margins. Skid. Look at that high shot shows how far round the corner is, but it's such a long corner at two points at which you should be clipping the inside edge and guiding it around the outside. And unfortunately, it probably was literally just one outside wheel onto the grass and the rest, well, you can see with the damaged door that's been removed from the car being put down onto the, onto the deck. So Urs yeah. will be really, really upset because he was having a, a fine race, that trio of Aston Martins having a real, real Yeah, they were having off. a proper dust-up and, you know, three DB4 GTs, and that means that there's... Yeah, no real advantage for any of them. There he is, walking back. So pit lane is closed. So no pit stops here. OK. Martin, who hasn't pitted? Well, I'll tell you who hasn't pitted is Nicky Pastorelli. That 14-second advantage, maybe it came down to 10. Only half the field have pitted. Only half the field, but everything, that advantage is going to be compressed, and then it's going to have to serve a pit stop. Yeah. This is a big helping hand for everyone from second backwards. Absolutely. That, and, and that, unfortunately, shoots down, putting Pastorelli in first and building up a big advantage. If they'd got John in before the change, wouldn't have made any difference because he still would have been caught with everybody behind him. Now, at some stage, once the track goes green, and it's probably going to be another couple of laps, so maybe Minimum. with, yeah, sort of seven or eight minutes taken out of the time, we're going to have a very small pit window. So the leader, car number 14, Nicky Pastorelli yet to stop. In second place is car number seven. So that's the silver Ferrari 250 with the yellow highlights. And Van Songe in second place, still to hand over to Joe Twyman. In third place is car number 10. They've yet to stop as well, the Tetley and Maiden car. Fourth place, 333. Now that's the Minshaw family, one of, one of the Minshaw families. This is uh, <laughs> E-type. John Minshaw, who shares with son Jack, so that's 333, the red E type. Then you've got car number one, Scott Dixon, Dario Franchitti, another E type Jack, also yet to stop. They're in fifth place. Sixth place is Vandalov and Berman. Vandalov started that car, didn't he? he so did, Yelma Berman waiting to take that over. That is car number 12, and that is in sixth position. Needell and Spires, car number three, they're in seventh. Yes, they started stop. that because John Spires is still yeah, recovering from the previous race. Sweating. And then the last car of the front runners not to pit was the Nick Dick Ditting and, and Jochen, Jochen Mass. Mass. Car. Yeah. And so that car is in eighth place. So of those who have stopped, Olivier Hart is in the British Racing Green Ferrari 250, car number 16. Sh right behind him should be the white E-type with the black roof, that is Karun Chandok, who's taken over number 23. And then the dragon snake. Yeah, then 
than the Cobra that you can see. So, right, safety car is out, pit lane is closed, it's relatively quiet until I throw to Ed, who is with Mike Whitaker. Ed is with, with Mike Whitaker. Mike, it was a tricky start, but what a climb back through the field. Um, well, the tricky start was my fault. If I could only find where second gear is on a hate shift, I'd be better. Um, but then it was really good coming back past the guys. Uh, we're a little short top speed, but we've got quite good handling. So I just had to try and just pick my way through. Andrew's in the car at the moment. He did say that the rear tyres sometimes go off. I guess he's got that all under control. Um, maybe, maybe not, uh, because I think I used a lot of rear tyre coming back past the guys who were second, third and fourth. Um, and I nearly needed Mud and Snurls passing the Ferrari down into Madgwick. He's, I got a bit of a green, grey view of the track. To be fair, Andrew's a, prof a professional racing driver, so he'll be able to handle it. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, that's, that's why I went first as the amateur. And um, I just left it to Jordan's just to decide when to pull me in, which now looks like it was the right call. Best of luck. Thanks, Ed. Thank you. Well, Mike Whitaker downplaying his role in this even more than Ed Foster was after qualifying third for the uh, MG race tomorrow. So, yeah, if only I knew where second gear was in an H pattern gearbox, it would have been a, a, a better start. Well, you know, in the heat of battle, just getting the clutch coming back up a fraction before the gears engaged. We've all been there, we've all done that, and most of us are to traffic lights rather than in a, in a big car on a big, big stage like this. But Mike Whitaker suggesting, you know, all, all was simple and he just did his bit, but just looking at a replay there, when he went past the Ferrari with David Hart on board, he had the right-hand wheels on the grass on the way into the first part of St Mary. So he didn't lift because at that point that would have been cataclysmic. Yeah. So he knew what he was doing, but he, he stuck his neck out and he that's made what, it work. That's what he was talking about, m and is that's not the shot. These aren't just tyres, these are M&S tyres. What he means is mud and snows. Ask your father. Actually, in fact, for, for most of the audience here, you actually are your father, so, so you, you, <laughs> you know what an m and yeah, so a big and knobbly all-weather tyre. M&Ss, they just don't find them anymore. Town and countries don't exist anymore. What a great look on a car they always were. So, safety car remains out as I witter on in Nainley, halfway through the race with eight seconds to the halfway mark, 30 minutes down, 30 to go, and about half the field have stopped. So there are a couple outside the top eight uh, who have yet to stop, but everybody else um, ahead, well, particularly ahead of the Cobra and the E-Type that it's chasing, number 23 E-Type, they have stopped. So Himmel and Chundok in the 23 E-Type and the Cobra right behind car number 822 as the well, actually, rather straight looking from the side we first saw it from, Bruce. Yes, the clue is not quite so straight on the passenger yes, side. Yes, you can't close the door on the passenger side because it's lying on the grass. But anyhow, the that, that's the good news, bad news accident reported. The good news is that the right hand side is lovely. The bad news is that there are two sides to the car. Oh, there were. There's there were. now really only one side to the car. Anyhow, it will take a while. Obviously, the car will be fairly quickly put up onto that flatbed truck, but they've got to repair the tyre walls on the outside. But a driver who was absolutely flying was Jensen Button. We got the treat of riding on board with him, and he's down with Ed Foster. Jensen, you've just been saying that you were going backwards. I don't think you were. No, I was. Um, at the beginning, I went forwards, um, and I got up to sixth, I think, from 11th. Uh, and the car felt really good. The guys did a great job of uh, improving it from yesterday, because this car hasn't ever tested. It's come straight here, basically, so we've never driven it. So it was, uh, yesterday was a little scary, but today was really enjoyable. Um, I almost got put in the pit wall at some point. <laughs> Everyone had to move their pit boards out of the way. Uh, I was actually ducking as I went past. Um, so so no, I had a lot of fun out there, and then um, with the last sort of five laps, I had massive degradation. So still some work, work we need to do with the car, but um, it was really good fun. And I had a little tussle with Scott Dixon as well, um, which was uh, which is nice. You said that the car was quite difficult yesterday, but you've improved it. What did you do overnight? Um, lots of, well, quite a bit. Stiffened it a lot. Um, so it's it's working much better, but uh, yeah, we just struggle a little bit with with uh, top gear and also um, and, and just overheating of the tyres. I'm trying to be as smooth as possible, but uh, yeah, it didn't really work. But no, great fun. Um, we called the pit stop really well, though. We came in early and now we're running in fourth, I think. Uh, fourth after the people in front do pit stops, which isn't too bad. Well done, Jensen. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, not having any fun here at all, though, uh, Jensen and Al Bunkham, are they in car number 22? 
Well, I just wonder if their friendship can last intact, because what tires as he left his, yeah. his childhood friend Alex Buncombe on that uh, fantastic-looking well, Jaguar E-Type. But we I tell you what... We've all got that, mate, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> we've we, all got that, friend. We certainly have. But I love the fact he's a uh, great fun out there. I nearly was put into the pit wall. But, uh, you know, uh, we're such stucking. a it's visual so entity there. Right, riding on, on board and just taking a look around the lap. And uh, it's sl quick, quick, slow at the moment. And this is Jensen's car. I was just yeah. identifying the helmet. That is uh, Alex Buncombe. Uh, we're now looking at him. And, of course, he's driven an awful lot of historic racing cars as well. But Gary Pearson was one of the stars in the early part of the race. But we were slightly concerned about uh, the 23 Jaguar uh, emitting a lot of smoke. Let's find out from Ed Foster what was going on. Gary, cracking first stints. But there's quite a lot of smoke at the back of the car. What's, what's going on? Uh, yeah, we've got a bit of a leak. The uh, the dipstick's chattering around a little bit. <laughs> it, uh, it blows a bit of oil out, and when you turn right, it drops on the exhaust. So uh, it's, not, it's nothing serious. It looks a lot more alarming than it is. The smallest of problems, but what a great first stint. Everything seems to be working quite well. Yeah, the car's going really well. Had a, had a cracking race with, with Dave Hart. We've, uh, we've had a lot of good ding-dongs over the years, and um, that was just always good fun. It's nice that we picked it at the same time, because we've, we've obviously, between the Cobra and ourselves, we've... Uh, we picked up the safety car nicely, so uh, the race is going to continue. So Karun was, was quick in the car yesterday, so, uh, so he can continue doing with Olivier. Good luck, Gary. Thank you very much. I, 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 I just, again, you know, obviously a man who knows his car intimately, there are two dipsticks in my car. At least there are, there's only one now because it's in the car park and I'm here. But I, I, of all the rattles on my car, I would never know which was which, but... Yeah, so it's 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 okay, and and it wasn't. It's unlikely to be valve guys in a brand new racing engine, but it was it was something less significant than it was than it looked. So good news for that car, and the good news is, as he says, that they have got their driver change done, and they got it done when the pit lane was relatively empty, and then the time they had lost no longer exists because all of the gaps have been closed up behind the front runners who had stopped so you've really got to feel for Nicky Pastorelli built an advantage he got about 14 seconds came back a bit he's still leading but he hasn't made a pit stop in his Ferrari 250 short wheelbase neither has Vincent Gay but the good news for Vincent at least he's gained about 10 seconds or taken it out of that under the safety car was still going to be another lap or two under the safety car in fact I wonder what yeah. it does to the we're, last we're two cars be, who haven't we're, pitted we're going to be another five minutes so they are going to have to extend the pit window because this because pit is pit lane is shut so the 20 minute window stopped and somebody somewhere has started their stopwatch and is now waiting to really so we'd had maybe 14 12 minutes of, of the pit window yeah and we've still got theoretically uh, you know four and a half minutes before it has to close that but means, it is closed yeah. at the moment because the safety car is round if However, maybe not even that man because we had 30 minutes to go we were still like we were under safety car there were we it's a little austin j40 track down on the bottom of the picture you can take your kids around and uh, they can try out the christmas present they're going to ask daddy for Love with that one. Uh, you see the uh, the aero display of all the Spitfires and the Hurricane over the, the on the Lavin Strait by the bridge there. And don't forget, there are still plenty of opportunities to uh, get fed and watered around the circuit. And there will be over the road, by the way, uh, if you haven't been there, shopping heaven. And uh, there will be food, music, drinking, and shopping until 10.30 tonight. What a beautiful way to spend a Saturday evening after a fantastic day at the Revival. Scott Dixon still needs to hand over, so there is the Kiwis helmet. That is definitely not the Saltai and Italian flag of Dario Franchitti. So Dario waiting in the pit lane patiently, as everybody is. It's kind of uh, twiddling their thumbs and going, yep, eventually we'll go back to racing and we still got to do the pit stops. So they'll have to work on that. And uh, there's, there's a lot to see and do. This race will finish. Uh, 23 minutes. Yeah, 23 minutes. So, uh, yeah, so we, the, the, the clock started running when we got underway. So the 60 minutes isn't stretchable, unfortunately. That means a little less racing for all of these drivers. It does really throw a fly in the ointment in some of the strategic planning. However, what it will do is put everybody close together. Rob Huff got into cut seven, didn't he? He's taken over. Uh, uh, yes, it, yes, it has. Yeah, no, that was Huffy's hand, I could see. So, OK, Martin, let's just go... 17, th expect that to come up the order now. Yeah, you would, but let's just go through the front runners of the cars that have pitted. Olivier yeah. Hart has taken over the number 16. Uh, 
the 250 short wheelbase. But let's go down quickly to Dario Franchitti, who is with Ed Fosser. He's still got to get in the car. Scott Dixon is bringing it round. Ed. Dario. Scott's had a great opening stint. Oh, he has, really. Unbelievable. Passed a load of cars, good lap times, and, uh, yeah, I couldn't ask for more. Really good job. This has surely got to be the worst bit, the waiting. Yeah, especially as the plan was to pit as soon as the window opened to avoid a safety car, but somehow uh, we didn't translate that into the pit board, so unfortunately we find ourselves in this position. But um, hey, Scott looks like he's having massive fun out there. So um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll pit in a couple of minutes when it goes green and let's see what we can Now we've got a lot of the cars are going to come in at once. Have you got a plan? Try not to get hit. <laughs> Right, well, best of luck. Thank you. Th that's a, a, going to be an issue. Ten cars need to pit out of how many have we still got running? 22. So half the field, as soon as we go green, will just peel into the into the pit lane pretty much as one. Now, they won't all be in one lump. There will be cars between them, but there won't be many cars between them. And so uh, hopefully the garages are spaced enough that they're not all falling over each other. Yeah, the team should be sensible at this point. If it is only 10 cars, they should have enough space, but just make sure you're not right next door to another next to another crew. They should work that one out. Well, the good thing is you don't have to stop outside your own garage like you would set at Le Mans. No, you can, if, if you know that the guys next to you are stopping and the guys on the other side are stopping, Shut you can up. actually walk along the pit lane and set yourself up somewhere like where the Cobra was, because they don't need to stop. So you just make some space for yourself, and the driver will then just look for the helper in the pit lane. Of course, that might not be the easiest thing to see either. Uh, shadows lengthening, and as we get back to racing, they will be heading into the sunset as they head down towards Ford Water. You go into the shadow then as you drop down through St Mary's, but again, as you come up to towards Lavent, you will be, again, a victim of the low sun. And in fact, we were hearing from the drivers in the evening race yesterday that as they leave Lavent and go down towards Woodcote, you can't see in your mirrors. No. The sun's still a bit higher than it was in the race yesterday evening, but it's still a factor when you're trying to find someone which way they're going to try and pass me, and all you can see is bright orange in your mirrors. It's very tricky. So Nicky Pastorelli still leading, still loads us a pit stop. Second place, another Ferrari 250 short wheelbase. That's Vincent Gay. He's got to come in. And the top E-type that hasn't come in, car number 10, that's uh, Jack Tetley to hand over to Nick Mate from third position with Jake John Minshaw to hand to his son, Jack. Yeah. So all those guys, you can see there is still a, a tyre trolley or a, still a trolley of tyres are down on the exit of Madwick, the first corner here, as they continue to work on the, the pit wall. The, the drama uh, was less about removing the Aston because that at least was a roller. It still had wheels attached. So it was the right way up, which is often a big help when you're trying to get things onto a flatbed, uh, particularly things of this sort of nature where um, you can do possibly tens of thousands of pounds worth of damage by dragging it uh, inconsiderately onto a onto a truck or lifting it inconsiderately. Just to clarify, when you said a roller, that means it rolls on its wheels as opposed to one that went yes, rolling exactly. across yeah, over yeah. its roof and down again. Yeah, well, when, when you can push them forwards and backwards, it is an awful lot easier to move. By the way, uh, just a, again, our traditional, uh, when we get a, a quiet moment, shouts to uh, all the heroes in orange, and particularly here in white, because an awful lot of the uh, track workers and officials will be wearing white overalls here, uh, as in period. So all of the marshals, all the officials, uh, giving their time for free here, as they do at every race meeting, keeping drivers safe, keeping uh, the, the cars safe on track, and uh, keeping the spectators happy as well. A shout out to all the stewards as well, who are doing such a good, humoured, great job. It does help that it's not freezing cold and slicing with rain, so as ever, the revival uh, trying to get the best out of this late English summer. But thank you to all our marshals, all our stewards, and uh, all the officials who make this such a joy to come racing at. This, uh, this revival meeting is just one of the great sporting events uh, of the British summer, in, indeed, of any summer anywhere, I have to say. Sporting and cultural. Right, there's, a, there's still a several more laps. Those course vehicles will need to be removed. Certainly you don't want two Land Rovers sitting on the outside of the corner with the trailers, but it looks like the, the repairs, the tyre wall, are pretty much complete. They're being inspected now. So for Nicky Pastorelli, well, it's not past his bedtime, but it's way past the point at which he should have come in. But they can't come in for the cars that, uh, because there was still time on the pit stop window, but they can't come in because a safety car is leading them around. So it does mean that John Hugenholtz will take over with uh, not that much racing to do. It's down to 17 
and three quarter minutes remaining. By the time the pit stop has been served, and that's not going to be in the next lap, or maybe even with two, it's going to leave some of the drivers only 10 minutes to finish this race. But those that didn't come in and serve a pit stop will be fuming. It might have been by the smallest of moments, Martin. Maybe they were planning the next time around. Maybe they were just trying to avoid crowding in the pit lane and they've yeah. been caught out. The safety car came out, the pit lane entry was closed. Yeah, so all of the plans of mice and men have gone to uh, gone to rack and ruin here, haven't they? Whether you plan to start your second driver and have your first driver bring the car in somewhere in the top ten and then have plenty of time to uh, reel in those in front or whether you hope to have a handy advantage when you hand it over to your second driver and allow him to uh, try and sit on that. Neither of those works. So uh, we should have driver change window will remain open after the 20 minutes to go, so four minutes ago, and they will extend the driver pit window for the length of time that the safety car has been out, which has been, I think, over 15 minutes. So effectively, the pit window will be open till the end of the race. Also, we will have stationary yellows at Madwick. The first corner will be remain under yellow flags. There will be no overtaking once you get down into Madwick or under, under braking for Madwick where you get to the marshals post. So. And just to stress, the yellow, the yellow flag at Madwick is not only for the first lap once the safety car is yep. withdrawn, it's for the remainder, the remainder of, of the race. race. Yeah. So, pit window will open as soon as we go green. Not as soon as the lights go off on the safety car. So when we go back to green, that will be the start of a potential in-lap for the 10 cars who have yet to stop. And when they all peel into the pit lane, Marshall's just explaining that to the team uh, and the drivers. What's going on? How's it all working? Well, that's Ludovic Lindsay taking the... Well, he's raced here many a time. They're explaining what is happening. What we've just explained about the extra time being added to the pit window. He'll be going, great, I get a race and I mustn't overtake into the first corner. Okay, yeah. Two things I need to know. Got that. Absolutely. And, and that's actually going, probably going to be really, really important when they all come out of the pit lane uh, in tight formation as they currently are, as they get ready to head in. So the cars that will pull in are 14, 7, 10, 3, 3, 3, 1, 12, 3, 3, 3, and uh, 16, David and Olivier Hart in the dark green Ferrari will be the first of those who have already stopped. So our MGA police car. Nina Gaga, Nina, <laughs> heading back to yes, uh, the uh, tyre wall will need a little more work and that's why there is no overtaking down because if a car can find it once, a car can find it twice and that is not quite as stout a tyre wall as uh, the marshals and officials would be hoping for. So I think the safety car boards will be withdrawn at the end of this lap. The lights should go off on the safety car as it comes out of Lavin Corner and heads down the Lavent straight, that will be the end of timing sector two. That is the standard practice in pretty much anything you race, pretty much anywhere. So hopefully we will go green at this stage with 14 and a half minutes remaining. Pit window is effectively open until the end of the race, but if you've got a quick driver in the pits, you don't want to give them 10 minutes, you don't want to give them five minutes, you want to give them as much time as you possibly can. OK, two cars you really need to look for. Nicky Passarelli, car number 14, that is leading the way, but that has not served a pit stop. Another Ferrari short wheelbase, car number 16, is the first of the cars that has. That's down in ninth position overall at the moment, with the eight cars ahead of it having to serve a pit stop. And all the advantage the Nicky Passarelli car had built got up to 14 seconds clear of the second place car. That has been really compressed. This is a big chance for the Hearts, father yeah. and son. Don't forget for Olivier Hart, he's in ninth place on the timing. He's not ninth in the queue. There are cars that he cannot pass before he gets to start finish line that may be between him and the cars that stop and may be slower than him. So he must remember that he's not to overtake before the start finish line or in turn one. So he's going to have to be very sharp down the straight. OK, safety car has not pulled in. No, light still flashing, just comes past our commentary position, so at least one further lap. And the clock continues to count down. When we stop, when it gets to zero, we've got 13 and a quarter minutes remaining. So, real frustration for Nicky Pastorelli. He really did his part. He met, but we thought he was going to come in right when the pit window closed, or just before. He was going to yep. run the long stint. Yep. John Hugenholz was standing, ready to take over. However, he is still waiting. There is, John. So, it, I mean, that's always the gamble. That is always the gamble in the two-driver race. If you keep your pro uh, you know till late that you you've got to get them in early in case there is a safety car then they're best placed you know the early gap will be eaten up 
but if you have your pro out and he has to go long and he has to go long otherwise there's no point putting him first then you run equally or perhaps a larger risk of a safety car crushing your early advantage so lights should go out this time round on the safety car yellow flag still being waved all around the circuit safety car boards are still out but they will be withdrawn and of course every single driver in this queue wants the car ahead to get closer to the car ahead you do know yep. you do not want this to telescope outwards and uh, certainly we've got cars like the dragon snake right penultimate car in the line number 16 that is our, our leader of the cars that have served the pistol but right you know, way well, down this line. And of in cars. front of him, he's got a couple of the Astons that were having a battle and a couple of other lap cars, and they need to close up. I mean, he is. Lights out, safety car coming in. 20 seconds behind the, the lead car in the train, so that's all free time for the cars that are ahead of him that are going to stop. That's free time for them. So their 50 minute, a 50 second minimum is going to be much less. The downside for them is their in lap is going to be much slower, and his in lap was much quicker when he came into the pit. So the total time in lap, stationary and out lap at racing speed is going to be less than it will be when you're coming in off the back of the safety car. However, one other little factor I want to put in, the driver's been behind the safety car for quite some while now. What happens when that happens? Their tire temperature starts to really tumble away and then so they can all react very well. So Nicky Pastoretti powers on and he's going to try and gain another couple of seconds and more. And in behind some of the others now yeah. arriving in the pit lane, Joe Twyman is standing waiting. Don't get in that car, Joe, that's not yours. No. Now, none of the front runners have come in. They want to get back up to speed and try and get okay, through some traffic. This is Scott Dixon coming yep. in. Dario Fricanti. <laughs> did you hear that stop? I did. Yeah, that's cold tyres. That is cold tyres. And that's Mark Gordon climbing out of a car. Another E-type further up the pit. And there's Dario Franchitti taking over from Kiwi, uh, uh, from uh, his, his teammate, yep. and uh, swapping it around. So, yeah, frustration standing in the pit lane, but it was a the, great the job by Scott The two of them are Dixon. a little more the same size yes. than the two drivers here. I did, that's like me standing next to my and Mrs. Haven. I mean, that, the height difference between the two of them was phenomenal that they're both going to race the same car. So 10 minutes on the clock and change. We should get maybe seven laps, six laps, six laps. Probably Dario's in reverse. Why was he in reverse? There was Not no in car attention. in front of him. So that was a little bit of a mishap. I'm sure he'll laugh about it afterwards through gritted teeth, <laughs> being the competitor he is. I'm sure the Scottish language will be fairly uh, saltire blue at the moment. However, he's on his way. Uh, everybody else getting back up to racing speed, trying to get the tires up to temperature and pressure. But for those who have stopped, look at this. This is a massive traffic jam. Rob Huff in the middle of it, the gunmetal car with the blue nose. He likes it best when there's loads of traffic. And look to the Dragon Snake Cobra. That's picking its way up through the. No, 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 no. Goodness me. Well, that was quite an avoidance there from Nigel Greensaw with the 179 E type. Very gentlemanly keeping out the way. But it's the flood that we predicted. Vanson Gay is in the number seven. Uh, Ferrari that came in from second place, the cars that hadn't pitted, and our race leader is in as well, of course, Nicky Pastorelli, handing over the 14, the silver short wheelbase to John Hugenholz, who's wasted, waited so patiently. Look how little space, the door nearly being removed by the Dragon Snake when that came in just a few seconds well, later. Well, for Nigel Greensill in that silver E-Type 179, they started this lap in 16th place, but eight cars ahead of them had to stop, so they, are, they should be uh, corrected time back in the top 10. Well, very, very handed, tidy takeover from John Hugenholz, but he couldn't get away. He had to wait. He had to wait. And maybe, in fact, that's what Dario is doing. Maybe he was waiting to go and hooked it into reverse. Yeah, Tiffany Dow just saw in the pit lane as well, doing his change to John Spires, the number three E-type. The white E-type with the red roof. That was uh, Jack Tetley handing over to Nick Mayton, who yep. also had been waiting patiently. Off goes number 12, Ferrari. Uh, Yelma Berman at the wheel of that red car comes out behind Vincent Gay. And Van Songay around them going car number one, the E type with Dari And he hopefully got that done before he got into match with. Dari will have been very aware of where he didn't, so uh, very aware of where those flags were. So Dario behind 
the well it's it's the Alex Buncombe car yeah, so is. arch rivals but I, I'd like to see that angle again because I'm slightly concerned there might have been a passing manoeuvre into Madwick where it's a no-no the yellow flag throughout but I'm not trying to make that happen it's just a, a query put it out make the move there's cut seven there is the green Ferrari and there is the Cobra so there's the green Ferrari car number 16 Olivier Hart with Andy Jordan behind him and they are nearly a lap ahead of Rob Huff. Yeah, they got slightly compromised by the DB4 GT, even though that's got Simon Hatfield at the wheel, I think, into that first corner. But uh, well, that now. will be a quick Aston now. Here comes Frank Keaty. He's got alongside. Ooh. Olivier Hart, the young Dutchman, trying to go around the outside, just completely offline through full water and into St. Mary's. Through goes the Cobra. Simon Hatfield will bring up the pace of that uh, Aston to pretty much E-type matching speed, but uh, Olivier Hart can't wait. He can't afford to. He has to go the long way around the outside, and Bruce, the rope drops away on the outside on him. It, it does. Simon Hatfield was caught in the middle of the track. He saw Olivier on the outside, but he saw the bright pink bonnet. How could you not? Of the dragon snake on the other side, tried to give that space, and that just meant that poor Olivier ran out of room on the outside. That would have been a scary moment. And bear in mind, his was the car that was the leader of all those who'd served a pit stop. But the dragon snake at this point in the race is looking mighty, mighty powerful. And that means that was a change effectively for the lead, because Olivier Hart in that Ferrari was the leader. The dragon snake car of Andy Jordan has gone through Simon Hatfield having a long long look in the mirrors where do they get to the yellow flags not long after the start finish line probably about under the bridge no overtaking there as they sweep into Madrid. So, again, confirmation Andy Jordan now leading from Olivier Hart 822 Cobra from 16 tucked in behind looking so pretty in that uh, dark livery, the 250 GT short wheelbase. And they're chasing that number eight Aston Martin DB4 GT and that's going to make life very tough for Andy Jordan he doesn't have much of a speed advantage over Simon Hadfield squeezes through on the inside Hadfield will let him go he'll let the Ferrari go as well because he knows it's not this battle did you say that we see the way that Olivia Hart was ditch hooking there through Ford Water right it's a two-horse race we've got the Aston Martin that's uh, a lap down effectively but the rest have yet to cross the finish line that was the advantage of the cars that pitted so we've got Whitaker and uh, we've got Jordan and Olivier Hart then an enormous gap they, they won't be able to see the car that's running in third place which is now John Hugenholtz and he is fully 53 seconds in arrears that's cruel so cruel so he's just come across the line, chased by Dario Franchitti, Jack Minshaw, uh, Twyman, Mayton and Berman are the next bunch of cars to get. And they're actually really quite close together. So yeah, well, You know, what I was really looking out for was when Yelmer Berman took over the, the number 12 GT Lusso, yeah. the Ferrari, and he's already just appreciably quicker than the cars ahead of him. He's got a long way to come. But 52 seconds, separating second from third. Nigel Greensill, fastest race lap in the number 170. E type, the white E type with the black roof and the black backing to its numbers. So Nigel Grinsell, the fastest man on track. That didn't take long. One lap to get up to speed and bang, in he goes. However, Andy Jordan has now gone quicker than that. 129.258, the only man in the 29s in this race. No, Apart the second man, Greensill was the first. Yeah, no, the third man because Olivier Hart has also Olivier done Hart it. He is, is just under a second well. in arrears, but picking his way through the traffic, Andy Jordan in that bright pink 822 Cobra picks off another one. He picks off the red number five E-type that uh, Rory Butcher, Scottish touring car racer, is really getting to sing. But every car he passes, if he can put it between him and Olivier Hart with the clock counting down nine minutes remaining, is a blessing for the race leader, Andy Jordan. Yeah, the Butcher Ball number five, the red E-type between the Cobra and the chasing Ferrari. So that's another little bit of traffic that Olivier Hart has to get past in that dark green Ferrari. So lots and lots of starring roles being sort of mooted by the safety car. Expect to see a lot from Rob Huff in Cup 7. That's not happened. Expected to see Scott Dixon, Dario Franchitti coming up the order. That's not been able to happen. Well, it's up to third place. Yeah. In the fourth place, it's just a second down on John Hugenholt. So Franchitti will be absolutely putting on a charge to try and make sure he gets to meet Ed Foster. They're all clamouring for a top three position. <laughs> That's the big attraction here, isn't it? Now, Hart has got 
a moment. Yeah, Traffic yeah, yeah, is up yeah. in front. The cut seven Jaguar right in front of our race leader, Andy Jordan, who's just got to be wise at this point and not panic, yeah. but certainly looking to pounce is the dark, dark green Ferrari in second place, car well, number and, 16. And don't forget, you can't overtake there in Madrid. So he, now he can do. Now hand out to the cockpit. Huge clump of traffic in front. There's Huffy, 2012 World Touring Car Champion. Around the outside goes Andrew Jordan and Olivier Hart's going, goodness me, are you kidding me? What are we on the M27? Yeah, but this is always the thing. You get the second half of a race when the pros get on board. This is the battle for third place. Car 14, the long-time leader, John Hugenholz, now at the wheel, having taken over from Nicky Pastorelli, but uh, Dario Franchitti back racing. Oh, oh, and Mr. Twyman, Twyman around, the, Twyman outside. around the outside. So Ferrari, Ferrari, wow. E-time. Hold on a second, Dario. Let's see what you can do. But the clock's counting down. Seven and a half minutes remain. This is it. Joe epic. Twyman, that was cheeky as you like. Now, obviously, Dario would have seen the build-up in his mirrors. We're not getting that in his mirror. All we're getting is... Uh, a view of Dario, but Joe Twyman, that was arrive, pass, and disappear. Do not go around the outside of the 14 car of John Hugenholz. Hans Hugenholz, the uh, circuit designer of uh, Sandport, among other places. Uh, Suzuka, uh, Suzuka going to be yeah, visited next one. weekend by the Japanese Grand Prix. Yeah, so free to go again. Vincent Gay looking, well, there's no chance they're going to catch the top two. But he's up in the second place, and a penalty for Olivier and David Hart, a five-second penalty, so they are nominally closer. But again, another bunch of fast laps coming in, despite the traffic from these guys. But the, uh, the Hart car in second place, that's not going to cost it second place. So it is now Joe Twyman in third, from Dario Franchitti and John Hugenholz, that battle. There is the Olivier and David Hart car, Olivier Hart driving now. Still not able to get by Rob Huff. He's been two laps now stuck behind Huffy. And that's... The Ferrari just doesn't quite have the legs on the straight that it needs to, to get by, which the Cobra clearly did now. And, and Joe Twyman just blasted yeah. past John Hugenholz as so well. He's up so to third. Up to third. That's a really great run. And remember, it was built on the foundation of uh, Vincent Gay having a really, really good first half of yeah. the race. But they had to wait for that uh, pit stop. But uh, really, Dario Franchita, he'll be smiling, but he's desperate to get up on the podium. So his next target is John Hugenholz in the in the silver Ferrari in front of him, car number 14. Super smooth, super Dario. Yeah, just watch Dario. There's just it's, it's so relaxed it's just all happening so easily he just makes it look so straightforward if you're in the passenger seat you would be screaming in terror because the speed these cars are carrying just would overwhelm anything you're used to from a road car but he just makes it look so straightforward and that is the art of a pro driver when it looks like he's on the m25 when he's at speed around goodwood motor circuit well, up to fourth place, but with the first two cars getting such an advantage from that long safety car period, as soon as everybody had served their pit stop, the first two were 52 seconds clear of the rest. They're having their own battle, but unfortunately, Olivier Hart has uh, blotted the coffee book, or maybe it was Father David on the way in. Either way, speeding in the pit lane, cresting over the 20 mile an hour, very stringent speed limit for a very narrow pit lane. Yeah. That won't cost them second place, but uh, it does mean that there's no chance that they will be able to take victory, surely, from Andrew Jordan and Mike Whitaker. Kiwi Scottish combination, car number one. Scott Dixon started, Dario Franchitti here. This is the replay of him coming the long way around the outside of John Hugenholz and just tucking in before the yellow flags at Madwick. And he would have been very aware of those from the previous lap, would have known exactly where the marshal's post was. Got it done in plenty of time, got his line back, and here is our race leader, Mike Jordan, taking over from Mike Whittaker. And uh, again, last lap, still in the 29s. Car in third place, Joe Twyman, one minute 34 the last lap. So the leaders are not the leaders because of the safety car. They are the leaders because they're darn quick. Absolutely. So uh, sad to report that the Pearson Chandon car reported to the pit lane quite soon after its pit stop. So Karun didn't get very far. The, the smoking uh, has clearly been more. Now, car 17, a 10 second penalty for being under the minimum pit, what, pit stop uh, time. 17 was a car that had a role to play earlier on in the event. It's the Rob Huff uh, Mines car, yeah. so that's uh, tumbling out of the top 10. And we talked about this the minimum time for pit entry to pit exit is 50 seconds. It's done, it's measured on transponders, but that means the team have to be very careful about releasing the car too early. And of course, Rob Huff being a pro, the moment they got the wave, they'd have gone go, and he'd, and he'd have gone. 
Um, so, you, you know, it could be one second short in the pit lane, that's a 10 second penalty. You always lose much more than you gain if you are too short in the pits. But it's a human stopwatch. It's not Formula One precision in the pit lane. The timing measurement is, unfortunately, the human effort of the pit stop is a little less so. so. Yeah, and I think, Martin, in many cases, when you've had a, a sort of interrupted process, as we had this time with the safety car keeping that for so long, maybe people just a little bit too keen to atone and, and grab back some time that, unfortunately, has cost them far more than it's gained them. So, new fastest lap of the race from the race leader, Mike Jordan, sorry, Andy Jordan, stretching clear, 8-2-2, the Dragon Snake Cobra. He's got an advantage, plus the extra five seconds of were hitting Olivier Hart, so they're relatively close on the track, but, however... And into the 28, so 1 minute 28, 790. So Olivier Hart in the 28 as well, last lap, 128, 999. And nobody else below a 1 minute 30 lap. So again, the top two, as we said, are just fast. Look, but if we even stripped away the five second penalty, there's just 1.6 seconds between them. But they were the lucky two. They've been the quick two, quicker than some of the quickest cars in the first half of the race, but they got the pit stop done before the safety car was called out because poor Urs Buller went off into the tower on the outside. Oh, but Madrick in his Aston Martin, it brought the safety car, it shuffled the race. But, uh, you know, you've got to just be a little bit lucky sometimes. Or wise, let's go for wise, the timing of your pit stop. Oh, wise and lucky. And, and if the safety car comes out and, and you have done your stop and you're ahead of all of your rivals who've also stopped, then you've got to make the most of the restart. And, and, and particularly, Martin, when, the, when it's a long period behind the safety car, it does leave, leave the others that haven't served their pit stop with really meagre pickings to aim for. Yeah, you don't have much time to play with. Andy Jordan used his impeccably, got ahead of Olivier Hall very quickly from the restart. Uh, Joe Twyman in the number seven Ferrari is now third from Dario Franchitti in fourth. Is that gap coming down? No, Dario just lost three tenths to Joe Twyman on that lap. The way the Ferrari came past and left the E-Type, you sort of thought that was probably on the car. Is that number seven machine? We've seen it here a lot racing in Goodwood. It is a very quick car and it's very capably driven. And I still really feel for the pastorelli Hugenholz combination. Nicky did such a brilliant job, but sensational start from the outside of the front row. Car 14, where is it on the time charts? It's down in seventh place. John Hugenholz really hasn't had much of a chance and he could be about yep. to be lapped by the race leader. Might be. This is the last lap of the race. Punching the air with delight. Not yet. Not yet. Andy Jordan. Practice punch, that was. Yeah. Now, yeah, keep going. Oh, hang on. Checkered flag pit window closed. Really? Oh, so maybe he did see the checkered flag. OK, we right. didn't. We didn't. We still had 25 seconds on the clock, but that has been waived. So okay. 34 laps on the board and victory by 6.2 seconds for Mike Whitaker, who started the 8-2-2 Dragon Snake, and Andy Jordan, who brought it home. Worked out very well indeed. The pit stop timing was also, as it had turned out, immaculate. Yes, it was. And, uh, again, if anybody still had a last lap lunge saved up for the last lap or got within shooting distance, there is no last lap. Check the flag is out. So. Dario Franchitti heading down to the final corner here into Woodcut again. Watch the hands. If, if you were in the car for the first couple of laps, you know, if you ever get if you ever get a passenger ride with a really pro driver around the track, just watch his hands and feet for the first couple of laps. Don't look out the windscreen. That's just going to aid you unnecessarily. Watch what he's doing. Feel confident. Then, once you know that he's really got the car under control, then you can start to look out and enjoy the ride. But the first, certainly the first lap, it's just going to blow your mind. Even an, an elderly road car like this, 60 years old on road tyres, is going to be very different. So coming past to take the chequered flag for the second time, but that's just or, simply because he was a little bit or caught Or possibly out. the first time. Yes. I, I didn't see it. We didn't maybe see. he did. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, he was punching the air with delight. The time has now elapsed. He has got to the line. And, and what uh, has happened, Martin, is the fact that uh, the excellent Yelma Berman gained another position on okay. what was the final lap, moved ahead of Nick Mate and one uh, car ahead of another, a Ferrari GT uh, Lusso moving ahead of an E-Type there to complete the top six. Yeah. Another fastest lap for the 179 E-Type on the final lap from Nigel Greensill. Again, uh, like a lot of the cars in the field, uh, the hot driver in the pit lane while the safety car uh, basically dissolved any chance of them using that power. It's 10 years since Andy Jordan first raced here.
in a proper car, of course, a Morris Minor. Uh, he then came back in the family Austin A40, that grey car with the red highlights, and he's driven all sorts of different things as well. The former British touring car champion has become a hugely capable, hugely fast and hugely flexible historic racer as well. If you put him in a modern car, he will still be quick. Put him in anything, in pretty much any grid. I'd like to see him in something like a Formula Junior, something that takes him very much out of his comfort zone to see exactly what he makes of tiddly cars and opening wheels. He's not exactly a tall guy. You know, it's not Matt Neal we're talking about here. He is single-seater driver size, so I'm sure he'd make a pretty good fist of those as well. I may have a sneaking feeling he'll be open and receptive, whether you catch him now or in the middle of the middle of the, the party uh, <laughs> later on. Yeah, you can probably get him to do anything if you catch him in the middle of the party. That's fair enough. <laughs> so very fair. And I'm, I'm not just talking about Matt Neal there either, so a very, very valid point. Well, uh, again, as with yesterday evening's race, a couple of pit stop penalties, but uh, unfortunately the, the biggest factor in this one was that the safety car blunted the charge from behind of several cars who had started with their uh, less speedy driver at the wheel. No disrespect to those who started with equally speedy drivers because they got just as stymied as everybody else. If you made your stop, you pulled the safety car, as Dario Franchitti was saying that he and Scott uh, were hoping to have done Scott Dixon, then uh, you had a greater chance, but you had to go out and get it. It wasn't just handed to you, and Andy Jordan is uh, very much a go-out-and-get-it kind of driver. He brings the Cobra to the line. Vang Songhe is already there in the number seven car. In fact, Joe Twyman is already there. Vang Songhe will join him shortly. So... <laughs> uh, not quite a donut because he knew he had uh, a fairly costly Ferrari behind him, but uh, I'm sure if he could have, he would have there. Andy Jordan arrives at the feet of Ed Foster, as do we all eventually, and uh, he is our race winner. So, uh, again, you know, their tactics were always cut and dried. Mike Whitaker was going to start and hand over to Andy Jordan as soon as he could. And uh, in the end, it worked perfectly. There's Mike Jordan on the left-hand side in the brown coat with the shades on, looking uh, just as happy as when he's been driving the car with Mike. And high fives all round for the JRT crew. Father and son love their racing. And uh, a, a good race to end this Saturday afternoon here at Goodwood. Let's hear from our top three drivers with Ed Foster. Right, so if you follow me around here, Ed, it's quite a busy podium, this one. Um, let's start here. Joe, what a wonderful move around the outside of Lavent. Uh, I think it was Woodcut. Sorry, Woodcut? Yeah. Um, well, look, Dario is obviously a fantastic driver uh, and a great friend. So to be racing with him is a privilege in the first place. And uh, I don't believe I'm saying this, but to beat him is, is absolutely wonderful. So, but I have to say, Vincent did most of the race. so. He did all the work. Well, let's come to you, Vincent. What an amazing opening stint. It was a busy few laps, wasn't it? Yes, uh, this uh, fantastic uh, races, and uh, the car is very good, and I have also a very good co-driver, and uh, it's a crazy race, uh, and I am very happy for the first class. Well, congratulations to you both. Let's try and find second place drivers. Squeeze through here, David and Olivier Hart. They've got their laurels on around their necks. David's trying to make a break for it. Um, Olivier, let me grab you. Um, that was a very difficult end to the race, wasn't it? Because there was a lot of traffic. Yeah, I, uh, I knew the pit stop was uh, a perfect timing. I knew we uh, would have been in front of the Cobra. Uh, but then after that, uh, I didn't really understand uh, what position I was in. Ah, congratulations, congratulations. And then uh, we were just going through the, the backfield and it was crazy. It was like five, cor uh, five cars in one corner, trying to keep it clean. And then uh, obviously, especially in sector three, I could uh, really gain on uh, Jordan. But then on the end, uh, uh, the last one, uh, one minute I saw it on the, on the TV, uh, they gave the checkered flag. So I was, uh, I was like, okay, is it done now? And then they gave the checkered flag again. I was like, oh, okay, uh, bad luck for me, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I did my best and I couldn't do better than this. So uh, I'm pretty happy and the car felt much better than yesterday because uh, the second time I drove it. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. So uh, 
Yeah. And my dad is also a very good start. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> David, let's come, let's, come, let's come to you. I mean, what a fantastic result for a lovely, lovely car. Yeah, I didn't respect it. I had a really bad night. I only slept for four hours. I was... But, uh, sorry. <laughs> but uh, I was happy. Finally, it went well and uh, constantly and nice fight. <laughs> Well, congratulations. Let's try and find the first two. Sorry for the language there. Um, emotions are running high. Let's squeeze through uh, JRT. Sorry, everyone. Andrew, um, I'm no expert, but you look quite happy with that. I'm pumped. Yeah, that was, um, that was the aim to come and win this race. So it's, uh, we obviously had a bit of a learning year last year with the car with Mike, and uh, we put a lot of hard work into it. And um, under the safeguard, I didn't really know what was going on, and it was going on, on and on forever. So I didn't really know where we were going to be once the others pitted. So. Uh, it was full on. It was a, a full on race with um, the yellow flags and the traffic down at, uh, at no name on one lap. So, uh, yeah, Mike will have fun watching the on board. Uh, I treat this car with just, just enough respect, I think, but I, I had to get through. So, um, yeah, fantastic team effort. Mike, let's come to you. You've just won a race at Goodwood after fluffing the start. What a cracking effort. Well, that's thanks to who got in after me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. That's not true. Uh, yeah, wait, listen. It's just great to drive around here, isn't it? It's my best weekend of the year, whether I come last or first. And, um, you know, thanks for the preparation of the car and Andrew for the drive. We've sort of pulled it off. We were fortunate with the safety car, for once. It's robbed us a couple of times in the TT, uh, but it helped us today. Well done, Mike. And just apologies again for some of the language. Emotions are running high. Not yours, Mike, don't worry, not yours. But that is everything from us down on the podium.